طيب سو بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار I commence in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful I send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions, and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. Indeed, beloved brothers and sisters, the best speech is the book of Allah Jalla wa ala, the Quran, and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of affairs are newly invented matters in terms of creed and worship, as every newly invented matter is something that leads humanity astray. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his infinite mercy and grace to always protect us from ever going astray. Ameen. So beloved brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we are continuing uh, with our last two sessions, insha'Allah ta'ala. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi with our last two sessions, insha'Allah ta'ala, of how to obtain the love of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Um, this week and next week, next week would be our last session right before commencing the month of Ramadan, insha'Allah ta'ala. And the week right before Ramadan, we will have a session on um, the do's and don'ts, insha'Allah ta'ala, basically the fiqh of fasting and salah, taraweeh, and the like regarding Ramadan. Just so that inshallah ta'ala we are prepared for that beautiful month, for that beautiful guest that is visiting us in just two weeks inshallah ta'ala that Allah has sent down mashallah as a time of reformation, a time of tra a transformation, a time of transitioning from one point in your life to another point in your life in terms of your relationship with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. It is the month that everyone awaits and everyone hopes to meet once again every single year, inshallah ta'ala. And may Allah grant us all many, many more Ramadans full of worship and full of, mashallah, good deeds. Ameen. So today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to cover the hadith that we were supposed to cover last week, inshallah ta'ala. And it's a hadith that is well known to all of you, inshallah ta'ala. And we want to really focus in on this hadith because this hadith and the hadith that we're going to take next week, inshallah ta'ala, they kind of combine together and maybe depending on the time, if we can combine both today, um, we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, but they're important in the life of the Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said in this hadith that is reported by Ahmed Bukhari Muslim. And the wording today is the wording of Ahmed where he says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبَّ لِأَخِي Ma yuhibbu li nafsi. He says, none of you truly believe, none of you truly have faith until you love for your brother or your sister what you love for yourself. Right? So the Prophet wasallam, he is connecting Iman to loving other human beings, inshaAllah ta'ala. He's telling you that you don't have faith, you don't have Iman. Unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself, meaning you want the best for them. Why? Because naturally you want the best for yourself. And because you want the best for yourself, you should always want the best for your brother and sister. And that the absence of this love is a sign that our Iman is weak. That our Iman needs work. That our Iman may be broken. That our Iman needs repairing and fixing, insha'Allah ta'ala, right? Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he's showing us that Islam is about jama'a, it is about community, Islam is about ukhuwa, right? It is about brotherhood and sisterhood. Islam is about, mashallah, coming together, hearts and souls and minds. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we read the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that as soon as he immigrated to or migrated to al Medina. The first thing that he did was join the hearts and souls of the Muhajirun and the Ansar by pairing them together. And they, the Ansar, were the most perfect sign of this hadith. 
loving for their brothers what they loved from themselves. So much so that you had them saying, take half of my wealth. Take one of my homes. I'll divorce one of my wives and you can marry her inshallah ta'ala. Why? Because they wanted for their brother and their sister what they wanted for themselves. They understood that their brother and their sister left and migrated from a land and came to another land with nothing. Subhanallah. They left their home. They left their land. They left their family. They left their people. Right? For the cause of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. For the sake of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Fi sabilillah, they made this journey. And subhanallah, they wanted to embrace their brothers and sisters in Islam. And this is why it's important for us to embrace each other. To assure that, mashallah tabarak wa ta'ala, we are embracing one another and showing that love to one another, inshallah ta'ala. And may Allah make us from those who always display our love to each other. In Jamil Ulum Wal Hikam, there is a narration, inshallah ta'ala, that one of the pious men of the early generations, he said, those who love Allah, they see, or those who love Allah see with the aid of Allah's light. They see with the aid of Allah's light and they have compassion for the sinners. So this is another point, subhanAllah, right? That those who love Allah, and we talk about this all the time when we're talking about da'wah. Da'wah, the main ingredient, the main component of da'wah is love, right? Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he's al-wadud. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he is the one, mashallah, who loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give this faith except to the ones whom he loves, right? Allahu Akbar. So here we see that the key, mashallah, the heart of the believer should love humanity just the way the Prophet loved humanity, right? So much so, as we mentioned before, that Allah said in Surah Al-Kahf, verse number six, he told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi perhaps you're going to grieve yourself to death, O Muhammad, because these people won't believe. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he was going through an emotional battle because the people would not accept faith, but that emotional battle was based on his love for humankind. And here we're seeing that those who love this pious man is saying, see with the aid of Allah's light, the Quran, the Sunnah. And they have compassion for the sinners. And sometimes because we've come a long way, right? Sometimes because we've journeyed so long and we've journeyed so far, we've forgotten where we've come from. So when we see our brothers and our sisters who are involved in sin and involved in shortcomings, sometimes it's hard for us to express our love to them because we become so upset. Why are you doing this? But we forget that many of us, subhanAllah, when we were in their shoes at that time, in that stage, that we were the same. And it took other individuals to love us, embrace us, and then change began in our lives through that love and through that embracing and through that relationship that we were building with the Qur'an and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we can never forget this, but that is based on love. You have to be like Muhammad, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you except as a mercy of, uh, uh, over mankind. And we can't repeat this enough. This has to be ingrained and embedded in the hearts, minds, and souls of the believers of the Muslims. And they said, and he said also, they hate their actions, but they care about them so that they can rescue them from their deeds by reminding them, right? Just because subhanAllah, you engage with the sinner doesn't mean that you approve and condone of his sin. No, you're trying to give him the reminder. Maybe you're not engaging with him at the time of his sin, you're cognizant, you know that he's sinning or you know that she's sinning, right? And you're refraining from those moments and when, when, when they're sinning so that you are not a witness to that and so that you don't condone it, inshallah ta'ala, right? But in the same instance, you are reminding them of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. You're reminding them life is short, habibi, habibti, right? My beloved brother, my beloved sister, change your life. I'm here for you, inshallah. I'm trying to help you alter and change your deeds, insha'Allah ta'ala, right? And he says, and they fear that these individuals, that their bodies will be placed into the fire of hell. Subhanallah, 
Right? Only the believer thinks like that. Right? And this was the mindset of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't want anyone to go to the fire of hell. Not the disbelievers, not the hypocrites, not the believers, not the Muslims. He wanted everyone to have that chance to have the mercy of Allah and enter paradise because of the love he had. Once life was over and there was no choice and nothing else that he can do in terms of relaying the message, then it was done. Like his uncle, his uncle was dying, right? And he's standing at his side and he's saying, oh, my uncle, just say a word that I can, you know, so that I can be an intercessor for you on the day of judgment. Until his uncle denied and turned away and then there was nothing else left that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam could do. But he loved him until that last dying breath, subhanAllah. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So we see that subhanAllah, uh, this is one of the reasons that we need to assure that we are displaying that love to one another. And part of loving for each other is to know that as Muslims, we have rights over one another. The Prophet sallallahu he has said in one hadith, the Muslim has five rights over another Muslim, five obligations. In another hadith, he said they have six obligations. And he said, from those obligations that they have, inshallah ta'ala, is to greet with the salam, right? SubhanAllah. To make sure that when the person says, As-salamu alaykum, they respond back and say, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Right? And that they get those blessings and their rewards because they're making dua for their brothers and sisters. And this is the hadith that is connected, right, to next week's session or maybe later on today, inshallah ta'ala, if we have time. But it talks about the importance of giving the salams, right? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, right, that you will not enter paradise until you believe. He says, and you won't believe until you love one another. Right? And he says, shall I not tell you of something that will cause you to love one another? He said, spread the salams among yourselves. Right? So if we're lacking that love for one another, inshallah ta'ala, then we have to give each other the salams. And this is the way we earn the love of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. This is the way, mashallah, we, we become from those who are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way we become believers. And this is the way we reach iman. And then when we've reached Iman, then we can reach to, to enter into paradise, inshallah. So here the Prophet ﷺ is conveying to us, we have rights. And from those rights is giving one another the salams, inshallah ta'ala. He says the second is when your brother or sister sneezes. And you say, alhamdulillah, after sneezing, that it is your right, the one who has sneezed, for your brother to say to you, yarhamukallah. May Allah's mercy be upon you. Right? And then you respond back, وَيُسْلِحُبَالَكُمْ And may Allah guide you, mashallah, in all of your affairs. Right? May He rectify and make good all of your affairs and guide you. Allahu Akbar, right? The deen is showing us we're constantly making dua for one another. SubhanAllah. Even in moments when sneezing, SubhanAllah. Right? Allahu Akbar. Look how beautiful the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is. But we have to be intentional. We have to understand what it is that we're saying, the intent, the dua that we're making, right? SubhanAllah, and not just say it absent-mindedly. No, Yarhamukallah Habibi, may Allah have mercy on you, inshaAllah, right? Why? Because we know that from sneezing, subhanAllah, people can die just from sneezing. Allahu Akbar. He says, number three, that when one of your brothers or sisters are sick, that you visit them. This is a right. And we know that beautiful hadith that I often mention, and I mention all of the time, maybe sick of me mentioning it, right? That Allah will say on the judgment day, Oh, Ibn Adam, I was sick and you didn't visit me. And the person is going to say, Ya Rabbi, you are the Lord of the worlds. How is it that I can visit you? He will say, my slave was sick. And if you would have visited him, you would have found me there. Right? SubhanAllah. We know that the sick, that the angels are in that room making dua for the people who visit. There are 70,000 angels making dua for this individual, inshaAllah ta'ala. 
right? Subhana Rabbil Azim. It is the moment where, mashallah, we come with the Quran and we make dua, trying to have it be a shifa, a healing for our brother and our sister. It shows that I love you. Why? Because this can possibly be the last moments in your life. And the Prophet wasallam said that when a person has reached the last moments in their life, which we don't know when those moments are, he says, encourage them. To say the kalimatain, to say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, because we know that the Prophet ﷺ said, right, whoever's last words are la ilaha illallah, they will enter the paradise. Allahu Akbar. So we see how all of these blessings are interconnected, right? That we go for one thing and they're interconnected. Subhana Rabbil Azim. It's blessings upon blessings, rewards upon rewards. Number four, that if a brother or sister invites you to their home, then that you accept graciously the invitation, right? You accept graciously and you say, MashaAllah, JazakAllah khair, inshaAllah, what time? I'll be there, right? And the Muslim is not one who invites just to be kind. Unfortunately, culturally, we have some of that that happens in Islam. That a person may invite you, but they don't really want to invite you. The person says, take half of my sandwich. He really doesn't want to give you half the sandwich. Tafaddal, right? And then you say, okay. And they're like, oh, why did this guy take half my sandwich? I was just trying to be nice. Well, trying to be nice comes with the intention of really wanting to do it, right? So here we're talking about true intent that you want a person to come visit you and spend time with you, inshallah ta'ala. And you should not feel bad to say, oh, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to go. No. It is his right, inshallah ta'ala. That is the moment that, inshallah ta'ala, you're going to build brotherhood and sisterhood. And some people may say, well, it's too far. But remember the hadith that we've mentioned as well, that the angel stopped the man on the road. He was, and he asked him, where are you going? He says, I'm going to visit my brother. I'm journeying to visit my brother. He says, for what sake? Do you, is, do you have some money you're going to earn? Is there something you're going to get from this? What is the reason that you're journeying so far to see your brother? And he says, because I love him for the sake of Allah. And the angel tells him and informs him, and Allah loves you for loving your brother for the sake of Allah. Wa ta'ala. You see how subhanahu rabbil adeem, how intertwined all of these beautiful teachings are. Subhanallah. So yes, it may be far. It may take me an hour. It may be take me two hours. I may have to jump on a plane to go visit my brother, my sister, inshallah ta'ala. But subhan rabbil adeem, it is a means, it is a road to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're talking about how to obtain the love of Allah jalla wa ala, right? So these are the things that naturally we should be trying to involve ourselves in. He says, number five, he says, attending the funeral procession of your brother or sister who passes away. This is their final right, that you bury them inshallah ta'ala. You make dua for them. You ask Allah, Allahumma thabbitsum bi qawli thabbits. Oh Allah, make their grave spacious. Right? Oh Allah, give them mashallah, firmness in answering the questions of the grave. Oh Allah, enter them into paradise. Oh Allah, have mercy upon them inshallah ta'ala. Why? Because you would want someone to do the same for you. So much so that the Prophet wasallam he said that whenever we pray Salatul Janazah, we should try to make as many rows as possible. Even if we're only 10 people, we make eight, nine rows, one person standing behind the other, inshallah ta'ala, and the angels lined up with us so that we, mashallah, multiply the reward of our brother and sister. And mashallah, multiplying the rows of who are going to pray over them and for them, inshallah ta'ala. Love, right? Subhanallah. He says, number six, that he loves for them what they love for themselves and desires for them the best in their absence. Subhanallah. And the author, he tells us, the shaykh, he says, this is an obligation upon us that we love for each other what we love for ourselves, right? And again, its absence is a sin in Islam and it's a weakness of Iman. That the one who lacks it has not reached the reality of faith just yet, subhanAllah. And he says that, you know, Allah should be your goal in this world, right? And we've talked about this a lot as well, right? And not the world, and the Prophet Sallallahu says, love for people what you love for yourself and you will be a believer. 
أحب للناس ما تحب لنفسك تكون مؤمنا right love for the people what you love for yourself and you will be a believer the prophet says subhanallah he says and be a good neighbor uh and taqun musliman and if you are a good neighbor then you will be a muslim subhana rabbil adeen because we understand that neighbors have rights as well that you should be that neighbor who takes care of the person who is living next to you Right? And to have, live in, in, in a community with good neighbors is what you want to do, right? There's an Arabic saying, Ajar qabla dar, the neighbor before the home, right? That when you go in to look at a neighborhood, you look at the people who are residing in that neighborhood, inshallah ta'ala, and you want to live there because there are good people who live in that neighborhood and you are surrounded by them, inshallah ta'ala. Right? Allahu Akbar. So again, he's basically telling us that you know or he says that this doesn't mean necessarily that we're going to put others before ourselves right subhanallah but it means that we wish for them the same that we wish for ourselves right we want them to have similar blessings inshallah ta'ala we want to feel joy at and when they, when they mashallah have reached good fortune right subhanallah and if we mashallah understand who Allah is based on his names and his attributes. That we understand Allah is Al-Ghani. Allah is the one rich, free of all need. And we are the ones who are poor when it comes to Allah Taala. Poor in deeds, poor in wealth, poor in everything. Right? And we ask from Allah to, for Allah Taala to give us these things, right? And when we understand that Allah is Ar-Razaq, we understand that he is the provider. He is the one who gives provisions. Ar-Raziq, right? You have Ar-Razaq and you have Ar-Raziq, right? SubhanAllah, the sustainer, the provider, the one who gives provisions, right? That this is, comes from him. That huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. That he is capable of all things. And if we understand these beautiful names and attributes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then we understand that the gifts and the bounties of Allah are limitless. They are never going to go away, right? And that there is enough room for your brother and your sister to have the same, uh, mashallah, success that you have had. To have the same wealth or more that you have. To have the same happiness and joy that you have. Why? Because Allah is the one that gives that to you. And Allah's hands never go empty with His bounty. Right? But this is a point of creed. And we have to understand that from our faith and our belief system, inshaAllah ta'ala. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He described the Ansar, whom we were just talking about, right? The ones who helped those who migrated, the helpers. The Ansar means those who helped, right? He says about them, and they harbor no desire in their hearts for what they have given to the Muhajireen. From what has been given to the Muhajireen, right? They prefer them over themselves. They prefer the Muhajireen over themselves, even if they themselves were in need. Subhanallah. And those who are saved from their soul's greed, Allah says, then they are those who are successful. Subhanallah, right? So you had the muhajireen who had no desire in their hearts for whatever the, the, the ansar, they had no desire in their hearts for whatever the muhajireen had, and they preferred their brothers over themselves. That means they loved for them what they loved for themselves even more so, subhanallah rabbil adeem. Right? It is a higher state of belief. They put them before themselves, subhanallah. <clears throat> and then the Prophet Sallallahu he says in another beautiful hadith One of you does not believe until they love for the people what they love for themselves And until they love someone only for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala We talked about the reward of the man who traveled And he earned the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Because he loved his brother only for the sake of Allah there's another beautiful hadith that you know, where the Prophet ﷺ, he gives, he says that Allah will give a beautiful reward uh, to a person who loves their brother only for the sake of Allah on the day of judgment. 
and I'm going to ask you this at the end of the at the end of the session, inshallah. I'm not going to give it to you now. At the end of the session, I'll ask it, and you'll give me the answer, inshallah. You'll give something on the day of judgment from Allah for loving your brother simply for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many may go on Google and start asking Google and start searching. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll come back to that question at the end. The Prophet ﷺ also said, consider what you love that people would love or people would do for you. Consider what you love or what you love that people would do for you. And he says, then do the same for them. Right? So think about it. If you were sick, what would you want the people to do for you? If you were homeless, if you, if you needed help with your bills and paying your bills, if you were having, struggling in your relationships, if you were struggling in your family, if you were struggling with your children, right? Whatever, you're struggling in your job, whatever it may be that life has thrown at you as a curveball, think about what that thing in life is and what you would expect or what would you want or desire for people to do for you and then turn around and do the very same for them. That is a sign of Iman. That is a sign of belief. He says, and consider what you hate and that they would do to you and do not do that to them. And this is so important, right? Because way often we don't think about what my brother or my sister may hate. I just, I shoot off the hip, right? I let my tongue loose, right? I let my actions loose, not thinking, is my brother or my sister going to get upset by what am I going to what I'm going to say, what I'm going to type, what I'm going to type in the chat, inshallah ta'ala, or not? Right? If I believe my sister will get upset, then I'm going to type this. Or if I would get upset after I read such a text, then why would I send it? I shouldn't send it. Right? Check yourself. Read it to yourself once, twice, three times. And I know. It's difficult for us. We're people with emotions and desires and we just, right away, we just go, right? Our fingers just go, subhanAllah, and send, right? So write it. Before you hit the send button, think about it. Read it again. Maybe write it in your notes first and then read it in your notes so that you don't mistakenly hit the send button, inshallah ta'ala. Read it once. Read it twice. Read it three times. Digest it. Ask yourself, if my sister wrote this and I thought that it was concerning me, would I be happy? Would I be pleased? And if your answer is no, then don't send it. Then don't send it. Why? Because do unto others, the Prophet is saying, what you would like to be done unto you. Subhanallah. And that is a principle of life. Haven't we heard our parents tell us this when we were kids? Do unto others what you would like people to do unto you. Right? And we find that this is part of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? SubhanAllah. He says, and then look at the generous spirit of the companions, Ridwanullah alayhi and how they wanted the best for their brothers and sisters. He says, Utba ibn Ghulam, he wanted to break his fast one day. So, he would say to some of his brothers who were privy to his affairs, to how he would maneuver, give me some water or dates to break my fast on so that you will have the same reward similar to mine. If you help the fasting person break their fast, right? You fed the fasting person, then it is like, mashallah, you getting that same reward of fasting. So he, subhanAllah, would go to his brothers just so that they can receive a reward and say, give me some water or some dates because I want you to receive the beautiful reward that I am receiving by helping me to break my fast. Allahu Akbar. Brother, sister, you know what? There's a cause I want to donate to and I want you to join me in mashallah getting this reward because I love you for the sake of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Right? Subhanallah. There's so many instances and things that we can do that would take us to this road. SubhanAllah. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala help us to achieve this in our lives, inshaAllah ta'ala. I'm going to join, inshaAllah ta'ala, briefly. I'm going to see if I can join briefly the second cha ch uh, lecture so that we can kind of be on par um, where we were supposed to be at. I already mentioned to you the hadith and it's connected with the hadith that we just took, right? The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, again, by the one in whose hands my soul is, you will not enter paradise until you believe. You will not believe until you love one another. 
and you will not. He said, and shall I tell you of what you can do, right? That will cause you to love one another. He says, spread the salams among you. And this is reported by Muslim. Okay. So again, he has made spreading the salams one of the good deeds that will take us to paradise. And the salams is the best way of doing that, right? SubhanAllah. And we talked about already one not being able to enter paradise without iman and that there is no iman without love, right? And the only way or one of the ways to gain love is to give each other the salams. My second question for you after. He said in another hadith, there's another way that you can earn the love or gain love of each other or one another. He said, there's something else we can do. And I'm going to ask you what that is, inshallah ta'ala. So uh, look forward to answering that question at the end as well. Okay. And he says, if we notice that there's a love gap that exists between the Muslims, right? That naturally is not because Islam lacks love, right? But it is because the Muslims are forgetting to be people of love. Allahu Akbar, right? And he says, and subhanAllah, we know that we cannot be Muslim unless we love Allah and His Messenger, right? SubhanAllah. So we have to love what they love. We have to hate what they hate, SubhanAllah, right? And make sure that, SubhanAllah, we are, inshallah ta'ala, reviving our Iman, right? And reviving our Iman comes from loving for Allah and His Prophet, or our love for Allah and His Prophet, inshallah ta'ala. And we cannot cease loving Allah and His Prophet, but we have to understand that in order to show and demonstrate our love to Allah and His Prophet means that we have to follow what the Prophet Sallallahu was giving us. Right? Because again, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَعُوهُ Allah says in the Quran, whatever He gives you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, take it. Whatever He forbids you from, stay away from it. Right? These are methods to gain the love of Allah. And how do we know that? Because Allah says in the Quran, Qul in kuntum Allah. Say, if you truly love Allah, now you have to prove it. Fattabi'uni, follow Muhammad. Right? You have to prove it. You have to follow the Prophet. Yuhbibukum Allah, Allah will love you, forgive you of your sins, and the likes, inshallah. And we've taken this in the past, right? And the Prophet, وسلم, he says that the firmest of knots, the most strongest of knots within Islam is for you, right, to love for the sake of Allah and hate for the sake of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Okay? You love what Allah loves and you hate what Allah hates. And this is so important in this day and time. SubhanAllah, when people are trying to bring confusion, people are trying to get us to compromise our faith and our deen. But we need to be people who are principled. Huh? Where we say, you know what? <laughs> I can't walk down that road with you because I love what Allah loves and I hate what Allah hates. Point blank. Whether you dislike that I can't walk with you down that path or not, right now is not my concern. My concern first is my Lord. And then I'm pleasing Him first. And then humankind, if you're happy with me or not, then... Totally, that's out of my control. But as long as my Lord is happy with me because I love what he loves and hate what he hates, then I don't care about anything else. All right, subhanAllah. And he says that love and hate are internal movements of the heart. It is something that happens inside of the heart of the human being, right? And he says, and giving and withholding, right, are external movements that are founded on the internal movements. You give in charity, or you withhold because of what your heart is telling you to do, right? Because of the iman in your heart. You go and pray or you don't pray based on what is in your heart, right? SubhanAllah. You worship or you don't worship. You praise and glorify or you don't praise and glorify. You treat people well or you don't based on what's inside of your heart. So he says when one moves internally and externally, when both of these things are in synergy together for the Allah's sake, and not for personal gain, then that you have reached the pinnacle, the summit of Iman, the pinnacle of belief, the highest state of belief, right? SubhanAllah. And we have to know that the society runs on love. And this is why when we have a society that is missing love, then 
Laws begin to get violated. People violate one another. People harm each other. People do evil things to one another, subhanAllah, because of a lack of love. Because no one cares about anyone but themselves. It's only about me. And whether I have to knock you down on the path so that I can make it up, then I'm going to knock you down on that path so that I can get where I need to get. Rather than knowing Allah is the one who helps you to get there, inshallah ta'ala. He is the one who can grant it to you. But you don't have to knock your brother or sister or any human being down to get to that part, to that position, inshallah ta'ala. Rather, you can both get there together without any qualms or worries in the world. And then, subhanAllah, if we're vying for the same job and you got the job, then it was written for you to get the job and not me. And perhaps Allah has something much better for me. And He didn't place me there because He knows that this was no good for me. But many times is I want to knock you down because I feel like I need this and this is going to be good for me. And perhaps it's not. And I sinned and I violated in the process to get to that point. SubhanAllah. Right? So this is what brings the collapse of society. It brings chaos into the world. Right? Our morality begins to collapse along that, alongside that. And we see that right now morality is one of the things that is collapsing. And people are just running wide, right? And running wild, right? With a lack of morality. As if there's no care, as if you don't have to answer to anyone in the world. But we have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? But we understand that as well as we interact with society that we have to be patient. We have to be empathetic. We have to be forgiving. We have to be selfless. Why? Because we are the illuminating lights of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Right? Allah says in the Quran, people will try to put out the light of Allah, but they will never be able to put out Allah's light. Right? Allah will keep his light, mashallah, flourishing. Allah will keep his light illuminating, inshallah ta'ala. And we ask Allah to make us part of that illumination for mankind. That when they see us, mashallah, they see the best of human beings. They see what the Prophet Sallallahu was. And this is why the people, they didn't know what to do with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because no matter what they said, no matter what they did, he always repeated or always treated them with love and kindness. And it was just difficult. How can I hate such a man? How can I hate an individual who constantly shows me love, compassion, care, mercy? It's impossible. It's hard. Right? So they would only they would submit to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala because it was like this human being is, is this is rare. This is not normal. Right? SubhanAllah. Even when Heraclius, right, when the he heard and Abu Sufyan is there talking to him about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, trying to, you know, cause the downfall of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Heraclius asks him, has he ever lied before? Right? He's like, no. Abu Sufyan said, I was scared to, you know, not tell the truth in that moment. And he begins to tell the truth about Muhammad and give him the accolades that he is worthy of. And Heraclius says, if what you say, right? It's a long hadith, you can find it in Muslim. If what you say is true about Muhammad, then soon he will be sitting where I sit. Soon he will be governing what I govern. Why? Because people like that Everybody wants to be around them. Everybody loves to be around these types of individuals. And this is why we have to be those individuals. And if we are those individuals, we would love to consistently and constantly be around us, each other. We won't be bickering and fighting and arguing over nonsense. This is what shaitan wants us to do. And Allah wants us to love each other, subhanAllah. Right? And it's easy. You just have to make sure that you treat people the way you want to be treated, subhanahu rabbil adeem. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> Bismillah. Okay, so this was the hadith that actually uh, my wife was mentioning yesterday, and I didn't see it, subhanAllah. So there's a hadith in the Tzaburani, in al Mu'ajim al-Kabir, um, that again, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He starts off mentioning um, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah is as-salam. Allah is peace. Excuse me. Allah is peace and the Muslims should be those who deliver peace. Right? SubhanAllah. 
Allah is merciful, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Compassionate, the Muslims should be from those who deliver mercy and compassionate. Compassion. Allah is Al-Wadud, the loving. Allah, the Muslim should be from those who love. Allah is Al-Adil, the just. The Muslims should be from those who uphold justice, right? So this is why it's important to learn these names and attributes. So he starts off with his name of Allah Taala. He says, "Assalam" is the name of the names of Allah that He has placed on the earth. He says, "So spread it among yourselves, peace." Assalamu alaikum. May the peace, the blessings, and the mercy of Allah be upon you. Right? He says, "For if a Muslim passes by a group of people and greets them with salam, and they reply." He would have been given an extra degree of virtue over them because he reminded them of the salam, right? Meaning, even if they're not going to greet you, stop. Look at them. Say, "Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh." Wa the brother looks at you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You get the reward, right? Subhanallah bil adim. And he says, and if they do not reply, then those who are purer and better than them will reply meaning the angels, and this was the hadith that my wife was reminding me of yesterday that I had not read, subhanAllah, and I'm seeing it here before me today, mashallah tabaraka wa ta'ala, right? So if they don't reply, then mashallah tabaraka wa ta'ala, the angels are replying back and giving you the salams, and what better than receiving the salams from the angels themselves, mashallah tabaraka wa ta'ala. In ending, bismillah. He says, the man asked, what Islamic deeds are the best? He replied, feeding those in need and greeting those whom you know and those whom you don't, right? And this is important. The salams is not just meant for people we know. The salams is meant for those we know and those we don't know, inshallah ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu he said, just before the hour, before the day of judgment comes, the salams would only be given between acquaintances, between people who know each other. Right? And this is Sahih and Al Adab Al Mufrad, inshaAllah Ta'ala. So we want to be from those who are not bringing about the hour, Alhamdulillah, or being from those who are showing the signs of the hour are close, but that inshaAllah we are giving each other the salams. And we'll end with the beautiful narration about At Tufail ibn Ubay ibn Iqab that he used to visit Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdullah ibn Umar. He is the son of Umar ibn. Al Khattab. He says, I used to visit Abdullah ibn Umar and go with him in the morning to the marketplace. He says, and when we went to the market, Abdullah ibn Umar, he would not pass by anyone selling good or poor merchandise, a needy person or someone who wasn't in need, except that he would pass by them and say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So he says, At Tufayl says, I came to Abdullah ibn Umar one day and asked him to follow me to the marketplace. And then I said to him, what will you do in the marketplace, right? Or when you do not sell or ask for anything in the marketplace, you're not buying or selling in the marketplace. What are you going to do in the marketplace? Let's sit down here and talk about it. And the Abdullah ibn Umar says, you with the belly, right? You with the big belly, right? Because at Tufail, he used to have a belly, uh, you know, or a nice big belly. And this is him jesting and joking with someone, right, that he knows. He says, when we go out in the morning, we only go out for the sake of giving the salams, subhanAllah. To give the salams to whomever we meet on the road. So he wants that reward, right? Because we know the Prophet said every time you say, As-salam alaykum, 10. Wa rahmatullah, 20. Wa barakatuhu, 30. Right? These are the rewards, the levels of the rewards, 10, 20, 30, every time you say it. So imagine you're walking through the suq, mashallah, our brothers and sisters, mashallah, who are in Al-Medina, alhamdulillah, and you're walking to the masjid and you're seeing Muslims all over the place. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 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 30, 60, 90, 120, 160. Subhanallah. Right, 150, 180, right, 210, right? Subhan the rewards just mounting up, subhanAllah, from something as simple as just giving the salams to your brother and your sister in Islam, inshaAllah ta'ala. So beloved brothers and sisters, let us be from those, inshaAllah ta'ala, who love for each other what we love for ourselves. Let us be from those who are seeking to have Iman and enter paradise, and we cannot enter paradise without Iman, and there is no Iman without love. And there is no love except that we have to 
give the salams and spread the salams among one, one another, inshallah ta'ala. So let's hold on to these beautiful basic teachings. These are teachings that are simple and easy, right? One of the things that we have that are going that goes on nowadays, people want to learn such complex things in Islam, right? I want to learn usul fiqh, right? I want to learn how to derive the rulings and break it all down from the Quran and the Sunnah and the Arabic language and all of these other things. And that's great, mashallah. I don't, I'm not trying to kill anybody's, mashallah, desires of becoming a scholar or the like, inshallah ta'ala, an, ac an academic, right? But... Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He made the deen so that you can earn paradise easy. Just going out and giving the salams. Just making sure that you treat your brother the way you would love to be treated. Making sure that you do unto others what you would love for others to do unto you. Right? Simple principles that you can practice every day of your life that would take you right through the doors of paradise like that. Fast. But... Sometimes we skip all of these principles, we forget to live by these principles, right? And we're searching for something much deeper and bigger that perhaps we would never understand and never achieve. When Allah Taala has given us the basics so that, mashallah, we can indulge in that as much as we want, right? SubhanAllah, over and over and over again. And it's like those little sticks that you continue to build one on top of the other, inshallah, until you got mountains built up, right? And may Allah make us from those who have those mountains built up. With that, we open up the floor. And inshallah ta'ala, you can unmute yourselves if you have any questions, inshallah ta'ala, at this moment.